Hey folks, we've got some things to look for in the coming days, a bit more information necessary on a recent story, and we've had a lot you might have missed recently. Let's begin with some energetic weather upcoming. After the storm arrives at the northwest coastline overnight tonight, there will be only about a day and a half until the Aleutian systems reorganize, and the convergence line draws directly down across the coastline. Could be some strong winds and storm activity. Meanwhile, across the world, we've got strong low cores in northern Australia and near the Solomon Islands to the east. The northwest coast of Australia is going to watch the system slowly creep down and get stuck moving west-southwest along the coastline trajectory. Meanwhile, the eastern system is heading south, and as it does so, an Antarctic convergence sneaks up towards New Zealand. This is much like a nor'easter in New England where systems converge and pound the region. It is set to happen in the middle of next week there. Let's take a little deeper look at this morning's article about cosmic ray anomalies that seem to spike in a way that may be related to Jupiter's magnetic field. The claim is that the flux transfer magnetic connections between the Sun and Jupiter are involving Earth as well, and our interplanetary connections merge into one during particular points in our orbit. This is a critical component of planetary magnetosphere behavior and space weather interaction. Most of you are actually more familiar with these magnetic connections than you realize. We have long lamented the fact that the gas giant magnetic portal connections are not shown on the endless spiral, but indeed the ones you can see, these curved black and white lines connecting each object to the sun in the center, is what we were discussing in that article. Every planet in the solar system gets a direct link to our star, and here is why. Earth is a sphere magnet. Its macro-scale electromagnetic presentation to the solar system has a dipole field and wraps around the entire planet. This is very similar to Jupiter's and Saturn's, and the rest of the inner planets have feebly tiny magnetospheres compared to Earth. But it turns out, it's enough. The Earth and other planets orbit the Sun in an electric field of charged particles we know as the solar wind. It's constantly outpouring in all directions and creates a massive field, and the planets orbiting magnets in the electric field are going to have these magnetic connections to the central star. This is the basis of plasma discharge between approaching space objects, by the way. Let's not forget the Sun is a giant sphere magnet as well, and in addition to small-scale fields at sunspots and the polar fields that engulf the entire solar system, the lower-latitude open fields streaming out into space all come from something you know, coronal holes. That's why they are black here. The detector has less to see with the plasma forced out more along those fields directly affecting the planets. That is indeed the makeup of the connections we've been discussing. Every planet connects to the sun at those coronal holes. That's why they can be so effective on the planets, especially with the flux transfer events. On Earth, they happen every eight minutes, a major plasma exchange between the Earth and Sun. Well, Jupiter's cycle is significantly longer, but still results in multiple flux events with the Sun every single day. Hopefully, you have a more complete picture of what is being described at action here. Now, today marks the better part of a week in a row with two uploads a day. Here's what you may have missed this week in terms of special videos and over the last few weeks as well. First, whether you are new here or are looking for a way to explain this group of more than 300,000 people to your friends and family, this video explains who we are and what we do. All these links, by the way, will be found right below the video. In that same vein, Raising the Standard is a video about our core pillars of focus, what we've done, and a bit of perspective on the greater efforts of the community. For more on some of those efforts, the resources video details all of the websites and website material and shows you where to find all of the tools available to you. For those coming to our conference next month or just curious about sneaking a peek at some slides, the preview video left a number of your minds provoked. By the way, one of the displays during Saturday night will be the world-famous Troy Willingham painting Fire with Copper. He seems just as excited as I am. As spring gets closer by the day, checking out our forecast for the U.S. becomes more relevant if you have not seen it yet. The recent look at the magnetic infrared dark cloud G34 was eye-opening for many of you about magnetism at the subgalactic scale, especially when it comes to star formation. The Alaskan 7.9 earthquake this week triggered a number of questions, especially about a mysterious connection in distance and time. The next day, our mysterious friend at the USGS came with the double-edged sword of mistakes I've made over the last year, but which actually helped validate something we published back in 2016. 
don't miss that one. And remember, all these videos are linked right below this one. Same goes for some key playlists. The Where Are We playlist has two of our more popular series on it and other videos. Where Are We Going is worth the time for sure, along with the one you can see cut off at the bottom, the For Your Consideration series. We also have our dedicated space weather, earthquakes, and our weather playlist linked below, as well as being accessible via our channel page. Things really aren't slowing down, even as the sun takes a breather for the cycle minimum. Let's all get on the same page and remember that someday soon all of these things will seem to be clearly connected, as connected as we all think they are, as connected as the planets and the sun. Be safe, everyone.